There are some who want to divide us, and we must not let that happen. They would like us to believe we are back in 1963 when my father came. We can live where we want. We can eat where we want. We own the water fountains. We have had a black president elected not once but twice, and here I am, living proof. Oh, man. So the left said it couldn't be done. But the red wave came across Virginia on Tuesday with Glenn Youngkin becoming the governor-elect. But our next guest, who was on the ticket with Youngkin, made history on Tuesday in Virginia. Joining us now, Virginia Lieutenant Governor-elect Winston Sears. Ma'am, what an honor to have you on. <laughs> it's good to be with you at old dark 30 again. Us yeah. military folks knows what that means, huh? Oh, I, well, so I was a Navy SEAL for nine years, so I served alongside with you guys uh, overseas when I was in Iraq. Now, we had you on the program a few months ago where your campaign was up and coming. And you made history on Tuesday being, becoming the Commonwealth's first female black lieutenant governor. I, what was going through your mind? I, I, I watched you live on stage during your speech. I thought it was very uplifting. I am a huge fan, so it's a huge honor to have you on. I'm at a loss for words because I, I didn't run to make history. I didn't, you know, look at the... Histor histor historical line and say, well, you know, if I win, I will be the first this and the first that and the first and the first. I just thought, they're, 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 our children aren't learning. Mm -hmm. And I know where to look for the scores and somebody has to care. And I am the most likely one who can bring us across the finish line so that we can help the children to learn. And that's why I ran. Yeah. Well, your campaign, and it, largely you were kept out of the spotlight for, for a lot of things, and, but I followed a lot of what you were doing on campaign, and it was a very humanizing sentiment. You, exactly like you said, look, I didn't think our kids were learning the right things. I, di I didn't do this for social justice or anything. You did this because you cared about your state, you care about the issues, and your family is a key, was a key pivotal role in that. I actually, during your acceptance speech, someone screamed out that you're beautiful, and I saw your husband kind of look forward, <laughs> you know? So, but it was, you have a very humanizing factor to yourself. Tell us a little bit about how that played in the race when you were on the campaign trail. You know, people, the voters, they just want you to be real. They don't want to hear, you know, big words spouting nonsense. Just talk to <laughs> us as if we're people. Because the issues are real. The problems are real. We're not getting along. As I said, the children aren't learning. The jobs, well, they're kind of scarce. You know, our lives are in turmoil. And by the way, one of the things that I always do is remind us Americans, not, not just Virginians, but Americans, we're not alone on this globe. Mm -hmm. we, we have China to deal with. We have Russia. We have other nuclear powers. And so, you know, we can destroy ourselves within while the other nations are, are, are moving ahead and, mm -hmm. and laughing. And, you know, we still got Americans in Afghanistan. We've still got translators who have helped us, the Afghans. And when is Mr. President going to go and get our people out? Right. Marines have died. A soldier and a sailor died because of his ineptitude. When is he going to lead? Right. So that's what I'm talking about. We can't be afraid of speaking as they say on the other side, truth to power. Mm -hmm. That's what we're about. Well, they're yelling at me about time on this, but I, I, got, I got to ask you one thing, and this is so refreshing to me. On Tuesday, you said that you were willing to die for this country, even when you weren't a citizen yet. You and your husband both served in the Marines, obviously. Yes. With, with Veterans Day on Thursday, I, I, I can't tell you how nice it is to see veterans who actually believe in the Constitution and things like that get elected. Uh, you know, what do you say to all the people who have been disrespecting the military, quite frankly, and our flag? You know, I don't care what political persuasion you are. I would have died for you to protect America. And the fact that I, I, I was walking by a, a booth with Democrats handing out at the polls, you know, literature, and I, I went to shake their hands and they refused to do so. And I thought and I said to them, I was in the Marine Corps and I would have died for your right to be here now. Yeah. And yet you can't shake my hand. Yeah. There well, is no respect for us, but it's okay. We'll love you anyway. 
<laughs> well, you know what? There's certainly plenty of love to go around with your campaign. Thank you, Virginia Lieutenant Governor-elect. Hurrah. Win some Sears, Ms. Uh, right. some Sears. I appreciate you being here. It's a real honor, ma'am. Thank you very much. God bless Virginia. Uh, yeah, definitely. And now it's in good hands. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.